In this video, I have with me Rehan, who's pursued his master's in business analytics and project management from University of Connecticut. And Rehan has had a very interesting visa journey. He went for a double master's without much experience, and his funding was mainly through an education loan. So in this video, I'm going to ask him some questions to figure out how exactly he navigated all of this. Plus, he's also sharing some interesting stories about life at UConn and some practical tips to help you navigate the first few days and the first one year in the US. Let's give his story a listen. Yeah, so, um, my name is Rehan. I completed my Bachelor's of Business Administration BBA in SRM Institute of Chennai from 2018 to 2021. Um, then, you know, I right after my uh, bachelor's, I stepped into a PGDM program, which is an MBA uh, in Wellinkar uh, V School, Mumbai. Um, obviously, I had to give CAT exams and stuff. This program attracted me because this was the only uh, MBA in media and entertainment. And because I have a lot of interest in this industry, that's where I did my PGDM. Um, so I've always been a problem solver, Sachi. Like, you know, I've always loved solving problems. I have internships in diverse fields, like... I worked as a marketing intern with Z5, then I have an internship in operations and one in management consulting and even one in HR to be particular. So I've always been a generalist, but then, okay, I understood that, okay, I was solving problems, but to solve problems more efficiently, I needed to integrate data in my, uh, you know, problem solving toolkit, right? That's, so that's what led me to the University of Connecticut's uh, MS Business Analytics and Project Management uh, from where I'm talking to you right now from the UConn uh, Stanford campus. So your background looks very interesting. Where exactly are you sitting right now? I'm actually sitting in the mid of my campus. Uh, it's a rainy day outside. Uh, you know, I, I I know we are talking it's on a really... Sunday, but right, <laughs> yeah. it's 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 the the climate is beautiful outside. So last few days of your vacation. Correct, correct. Summer is just wrapping up and, you know, we have like our fall semester starting in like, uh, I think eight to nine days. So we are gearing up and getting all the things ready. So you finished one year and this is going to be the second year, essentially. Uh, I came in spring of 2024. So yeah. I've completed one semester and then I completed my summer vacation. So yeah. typically this is my second semester. Yeah. Okay. okay. So uh, are the students, new students already coming in? Do you spot them? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... Yeah, we always get, we have our WhatsApp groups, right, where people want accommodation. They're just uh, hitting up with their doubts and stuff, like, you know, uh, about, it can be basic as, for example, the CT pass or the things they want to get applied. Um, other things like, you know, where do I get this? Where do I get that? What are the close grocery shopping areas around the What's campus? Already. Right, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So a lot of students, like you said, in eight to nine days, it's going to start, right? The beginning right. day. On 2024. So, what do you have to say to them that okay, ye karke aana to thoda easy ho jayega. Right. Um. You know, actually, this is was something where I wish I would have been told right when my journey and my preparation. Uh, I think the basic things everyone knows, like you know, get your SIM card in check and your open your bank account as soon as you step in because that and everything. But I also what I think is very important is uh, select your roommates very wisely is what I would say. Uh, you know, we uh, there are WhatsApp, lots of WhatsApp groups where you get uh, access to them, but people are selective based on do you eat non-veg or not? Do you have bad habits or not? But I think you can go one step further and uh, select your roommates based on the mindset they have. Because, you know, right, Sachi, we are the person, we become kind of the person who we surround ourselves with. So I think choosing your uh, roommates is a very important decision, uh, you know, you should do in your upcoming days uh, as, as soon as you start. I think that would be one. Um, the other thing I would like to mention is like academic part, right? If you're coming into a program like data science or business analytics, get your basics ready like Excel and SQL and stuff. But mm -hmm. I think what is more important is, um, you know, have your basic LinkedIn profile ready because uh, I think that is a toolkit here, especially in the US. Uh, networking is everything, right? Like I've mm -hmm. always been told network is net worth. So the wow. I think network the more better you can... Yeah, <laughs> I think the better you can, you know, talk to people, better you can present yourself. Uh, I think that is the key. So basic CV and, you know, getting your LinkedIn check, putting add your all, adding all your experiences, checking your headline, your about section, your profile picture. I think all that matters a lot. And that would help you because you don't have to come here and, you know, rework on the same things again and again. Hmm. But how soon do you need LinkedIn? Matlab, you need it as soon as... You're here? Is that what right? Absolutely. Yourself? I mean, 
I I think so because if you're really serious right about your jobs and internships and stuff I know people who are coming right now in Yukon uh, in this fall they have already started applying the second day they are here right so the the, the first week they've started applying to jobs and one month they land in US they have internships ready and uh, you know so people are that aggressive and obviously the the market is very competitive right now so i think uh, it's it's sooner the better okay like i have heard lot of other tips but said get your linkedin ready and come is like <laughs> i think <laughs> this job market can justify uh, what is right happening. got it so uh, let's take a step back 6 months back uh, mm-hmm. when you faced your visa interview so we yeah. have some students who are yet to give their visa interview and also again just like you people will be going for the spring you know try yeah. find it as well so um, you had a slightly different profile like you mentioned you're already done an mba mm-hmm. and yes. your know, funding was also not the traditional funding right it was absolutely wasn't. so tell us a little bit about your profile at the time of the visa interview and what happened in the visa process right Uh, so you know the visa process was quite interesting i'd say it was actually on to to recall it was like 16th november 2023 like one day before my birthday uh, oh, yeah. it was on yeah it was like in the mumbai consulate i had my biometrics in chennai consulate and my visa interview was in the mumbai consulate uh, i told you i've been to mumbai so i i felt that place is like really comfortable so i just went to mumbai um so as i mentioned right i had two cases which i was like kind kind of thinking a lot about one was the double masters degree and i didn't have a lot of experience before my second masters also like i worked as a six month as a management consultant but not more than that um and second thing was that all of my i20 amount was on a loan which was like uh, which was never i could never relate to anyone with that because everyone has say 80% or 70 30 ratio 60 40 ratio mine was like 100 0 right so these were two questions i was like kind of concerned about um i did my basic preparation right you know your videos helped actually to be honest and i think uh, um and i've also spoke to people like i've i have my us friends who have already been there so i've been on the other side trying to help them question so mm-hmm. that kind of helped i would say so i went there uh, as you you know the people were there like there were people from all age groups even if you are calm now sachi looking at them you get tensed because they are so emotional they are so you know they are doing something i mean it the whole scenario and the atmosphere it, it kind of gets you nervous Inside so there was a long line right 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 you I mean you might be you might be normal but uh, the person around you he is thinking yeah. so much the yeah. auntie next to you she's like terrified she's like you know so i think those factors were there but after a long wait i had went to the counselor it was like it was a male counselor i think he was an american um the first thing he asked me was uh, when did you complete your undergrad so i told him i completed my undergrad in 2021 but here i myself told him that i also completed my post graduation in 2023 like i didn't know if i had to say that but i think that helped because i just wanted to be very honest and candid with him so i told him i completed my undergrad in 21 and i completed my post grad in 23 so he was like okay um then he was like what other universities did you apply to i told him a couple of other universities i applied to that not eastern was one uh, gwu uh, george washington university was one uh, Uni- university of texas dallas it's a very famous university you should know that that was one and uh, ucon obviously so mm-hmm. and i also told him you know i got admits from all of them and fortunately um so he took a second then he was assessing then he was like so why did you go with university of connecticut um so i was very honest that time so i told him it's it's mostly about the program officer like this is the only program in the us which offers me a blend of project management and business analytics right so for a person like me who comes from a business background uh it's not just about the tech part it's also about how you integrate it with your previous expertise so you know um, a profile like data analytics and your management is something which can get you ready for any job or any role in any industry so i told him that this was one of the strength and one more thing was that i did uh, you know reach out to faculty and they are currently working in the industry so the tools they use and the expertise they bring would immensely help me in my journey so i told him and he i thought he uh, really liked that but the next question was actually a bouncer because i never prepared for the next question 
um he was like what are you going to do after your masters so i i mean i i was ready for basic questions but i didn't know to answer this question so for a second my heart was like dhak 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 um because then i realized i didn't talk the answer for this i didn't talk my body started talking and then i because i didn't know what was what were they saying i was like uh, uh officer i would utilize my stem opt period hmm. <laughs> i literally told that to him because i wanted uh, you know industry experience where i would um, use my previous management background and then leverage my uh, data analytics curriculum to you know solve problems and then there was no reaction from him i thought i just blabbered some basic thing and i got it wrong for the next one minute sachi he didn't talk at all i thought i lost it like i thought i gave it away i shouldn't have told sam opt because many people tell tell right you have to tell you come back to india or uh, establish your ties with your home country so True. i never did that i actually told him ki i want to utilize this time opt period for a couple of years so the next one minute was like very heavy very very heavy <laughs> because i didn't know what he was about to say um and he actually paused right he actually paused like this and he looked down on his table he was looking nowhere and i didn't know what was going on in his mind i think he was actually assessing the case there but somewhere at the back of my mind i had the confidence ki okay yukon is a good school uh you know it it has like quite good reputation so uh then he was like yeah your visa is approved and uh he gave you know the basic stuff i was like okay that was close so yeah glad he didn't ask me about my second masters and my loan like i thought it would be a, a question but uh, i think it was not a big problem right but i think it's very important to just put in this point here that mm-hmm. uh, you said stem opt and you got through but mm-hmm. because there's so many students who come from different profiles different backgrounds right in right. general it's uh, safer to say that your future plan like you you know you uh, thought Correct. that it should be linked to your home country yes so it yes. is for to always say that rather than being very yeah. upfront and bold like you were it worked right. out for you, but it can be a big it be a double edged sword for other people i agree yes. yeah mm. so for all the students watching out there be very neutral you know when it comes to pity don't go all in like him <laughs> because you <will> never <laughs> like, right i mean Yeah, yeah maybe i was just lucky enough or that guy was kind enough kind. you might never know right like if... right mm-hmm. some are yes very practical they understand that okay mm-hmm. you go to us you would want to get that experience but for some mm-hmm. we don't know right they are going just strictly by the rule that okay you should do your uh, education and then come back and obviously you right. don't know who you're going to get mm-hmm. so it's just easier right. to be yeah right right yeah it i think we should be a little yeah. safer in that side at I least am- you know to i think uh, one more thing which was very uh, you know very unique that day was that fact that after i completed my interview there was a separate uh, line which was collecting my documents uh, and they did it for everyone what um, they had they collected my iel scorecard they took a scanned copy of it they also took my loan letter and they took a scanned copy of it um, i didn't know because i've never heard about it before yeah. they did this in the mumbai council yeah. after uh, but for everybody after after the interview right and they did it for everybody uh, no. especially you know the ones who completed it uh, hmm. they did it for everybody so that was very new i was also asking my friends ki uh, ye hota hai kya is this common so i like, know this is not very yeah. common but i i don't know what was that all about yeah maybe they were doing their own research that day <laughs> out maybe. of this sample let's see what is maybe the maybe office. that also can be a possibility yeah. for some internal purpose yes. correct mm. yeah. so you've been here for about 7 months is it yeah 7 months um 8 months 8 8 months i would say so i'm going to ask you some rapid fire questions okay okay, so okay. answer honestly so what is the one thing you've disliked so far about the university Uh, dislike so far um i think you know the fact that there were few courses which i was not very flexible about because mm-hmm. they had um you know coinc like you know they were 
in the time of other courses where let's say i want to take a and b i want to take both the courses but because of the professor's flexibility i couldn't go for both of them so there were one or two courses i missed like that so that was like one thing i didn't like much but yeah i think it happens that's yeah okay and uh, what is the best thing you like so far other than your um, class right i think the location where i am right now is in yukon stamford it's a city in connecticut it's very close to nyc right like you can just go to new york city in like a n n r uh, with a train so i think the location has been uh, something which i really like the place where i'm living in downtown stamford it's an amazing city to be honest it's very safe so mm-hmm. i would i would you know tell any student ki uh, stamford is it's, it's a beautiful place so i think that's that's my favorite part about the university okay that's great so how many times have you gone to new york i think seven to eight times yes okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you've seen it. Pretty much you've seen it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, talking a little bit more about the academics now. So, um, mm-hmm. you are doing analytics with project management, right? That's, That's correct. Course. That's correct. So you know, a lot of people get questions about the course, even in the visa interview. Mm-hmm. That means that okay, correct. even though you haven't done the course, but you're you're supposed to do your research, etc. So, correct. what about the course? Do you think you would like people to know? that mm. something which you realized in this 6 7 months right so i think that's a nice question and i would any day talk about it i wish you can pay me for this but <laughs> they don't <laughs> i'm just kidding but um, yeah. you know but you never um, <laughs> right so i think the fact that they the faculty right of the course um, see because information is everywhere such you you know that but i think who delivers it is very important so i think the faculty of the course is amazing i've literally see student wars between choosing faculty a and b um and second thing is that uh, there's a generative ai course coming up in this fall uh, that is one course which i'm very keen about it it literally gets you hands on ready with the ai a uh, boom right now right like how do you use prompting to gpt how do you use gpt aspects in your businesses how do you use that to solve problems um so it like kind of equips you with the uh, ai stuff like for example if you see sachi in 2004 and 2005 when computer came people who knew computers were in demand uh, in 2010 2011 when the apps and websites came people who knew app design and website design were in demand now that ai is coming people who know to operate with ai they will be in demand so i think that is a beautiful course um, and there are other subjects like predictive modeling where you use previous data to analyze future uh, and i am you know they literally teach you in all aspects not just business right you can use it in sports you can use it with youtube you can use it with your own self like if you have done this 7 8 times in the past the ninth time you're likely to do it again mm-hmm. so i think it's a very all rounded curriculum um right which i think is immensely helpful okay and uh, also tell us some pointers about the university like people are mm. also asked right why this university tell me right. something about the university now that you've been right. on this how would you right. like put this i think you know i think yukon is an amazing university to network right you might never know how a single conversation from the right person can change your life so it's an amazing cam- uh, campus for networking and there's an also there's an uh, entrepreneurship hub uh, in yukon called university of connecticut's ccei uh, so even my startup live again it got selected and uh, we were also funded by the national science foundation worth about 3000 dollars which mm-hmm. i think was like um, a, a great aspect which you know we can obviously go more aggressive on it we are doing customer discovery talking to people so they are very supportive i would say right in such aspects and if you are a student who can innovate or if you are a student who's like be you know going for the extra step i think yukon has always been very supportive in that way so that is why i think uh, i you know i thought ki this might not be the right decision but uh, i have no regrets okay that's good so you started yeah. a company after coming there or you had this startup so i uh, no i i'll be honest like it's not a company yet it's more like um, you know it's more like a project which will turn into a company in the future okay. uh, 
yeah so this was like it was the idea was there in the back of my mind in india but we developed it here with along my two teammates who are also my roommates we mm-hmm. developed it here uh, in uh, stamford like and obviously the the entrepreneurship hub helped us develop it even further okay great so that's why you said your roommates are important absolutely absolutely <laughs> right okay <laughs> so uh how does a typical day look like typical day of classes like when you have when you're in the middle of the right. term so what does a typical right. day look like walk us through your day yeah so you know basically you get up um in the morning you have so here now in the us your whole timetable is for the next few weeks and the few months is already there with you so wow. if you're someone who can manage time i think it's very easy so you have your classes uh, the classes are generally between 6 to 6 to 9 pm in the evening um, because they also accommodate working professionals so they'll be done with their office and you know they can join us in the class so the morning times are quite uh, free but that is when you do your assignments wow. i think each course requires like 6 hours of assignments a week so if you put it like four courses you have at least 20 to 24 hours a week for assignments which is i think very crucial and one more aspect is you know networking right like as i mentioned you need to uh, be on your toes with your job applications and it's not easy sachi you know applying to rigorous jobs every day you know yeah. that is that takes a lot of time uh, mm-hmm. internships you need to build your connections you need to build people um mm-hmm. you know that is one thing uh, many people have on campus jobs they work for 10 10 hours to 20 hours on campus um that is also one factor and there are also other events which are happening like every week there is one events like a company visit or mm-hmm. you know some other program where you are a part of so that also demands there's also one part of the day where you have to give to your family members to talk to them right because indian timings us timings yeah. they they coincident and especially that happens in your morning which is their night like this is the pattern i have observed with my friends and myself Yes. it is around your 11 am to 1 am where they are able to also talk to you so that mm-hmm. is one portion you need to do because if you go without talking to them like say four days five days that's very important right to be uh, mentally going uh, that emotional support is always required i believe yes. so you know i think that's how the whole day looks like and after the 9 pm class you're very tired you just want to come home and you know plan for the next uh, day and just go to bed so i think that's about it but you know um, it's also about the time you spend with other friends here like as i mentioned the community you grow in that is also very important because as an international student if you come alone um, you need that mental support to empower you is what i feel so that peer time is also very important got it. so how many times in a week do you attend classes so uh, in in spring i had four classes so i attended four times now for all also it's four so it's average between like 3 to 5 but i think four four classes a week is like the average year okay so pretty much you're on campus basically yes uh, mostly okay. mostly few classes are online too like okay. asynchronous so you can take them at mm-hmm. the comfort of your home but i personally prefer in person okay. classes okay got it yeah okay that's like that gives a very clear picture <laughs> how much you need to juggle right. while you're in right No, no, absolutely. I think there's a lot to juggle. Actually, you know, uh, physically and even mentally, you also need to. Obviously, I I meant I forgot the most important thing, right? You need to come with your cooking. Okay. I don't know cooking personally. Like I struggled with this a lot. Um, yeah. I didn't know basic stuff, Sachi. Like I came here and I learned to keep rice. I came here and you know learned to make the basic roti. So nowadays, I I we just buy frozen rotis and you know. uh heat it on the tawa but you know those things i think were the most essential part my roommates were very kind they helped me uh with they the basic you. stuff but yeah 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 absolutely so i think there's also a lot of time for you to buy your groceries take yes. care of your home you know take care of your room uh, do the maintenance um, mm-hmm. and your also your body also requires a little uh yeah. you know separate effort i believe so i think even that aspect is there so it it just gets but it, i think it's the whole process is you know you just have to enjoy the process i personally have believe this has grown me a lot um you know in a lot of ways but yeah, yeah. i mean that's the reason you're here right <clears throat> you right. could have had a very different life in india but you wanted this you want this experience Correct. essentially right 
Bye. Yeah, and one thing I would like to mention is especially people who are on loan, right? As I told you, I'm on I'm on a hundred percent loan. So oh. that factor is always there on the back of your mind. Ki oh. you owe something to someone, and you always have have that uh, liability to pay them back. So oh. I think one it it does stress you at times, but I also think you can take it as a motivator because it keeps you going. You just can't sit idle because if you do, that thought comes into your mind and it Not gets you working. Time. So. Yeah, I think it's it's a double edged sword, but if you look at it from the positive lens, I think yeah, it, it's a it's a nice thing. Basically, students have to come mentally prepared to yes, very much, very much. Right. And just accepted that it is going to be tough. It's not hundred percent. Yeah, easy. but worth it. I would say very much worth it. I've I've seen my friends transform like A to Z in like you know in a year time. So you know they've born become so mature. mentally yeah. that now they are able to take responsibility so easily if mm. uh, their family members are proud right their family yeah. members are proud so yeah true that's a very nice very different perspective to hear that's mm. like yeah right. because nobody hears yeah. about the struggles but there is mm. also like you just pointed out right the positives yeah, of yeah. how it really shapes your personality so yeah a lot that's of them yeah <laughs> okay so mm. what would you say right what are your do's and don'ts or whatever however you want to put it right so i think the first thing as we just mentioned you told right mental preparedness is very important yeah. uh, b is that you need to be in your toes like each and every day uh, right like you if you're opting for a masters in us uh, especially an international student life it's not easy but you have amazing benefits also like you build solid network you build lots of people in your network you learn so much every single day so i think being mentally prepared is very important second is i would say network right like network really aggressively um as i mentioned right like you just need the right conversation at the right time which can you know help you go to places but you know what i would also very importantly say sachi when people think of networking is like they just go and say hey, this is what i am they introduce themselves but what i would say is always try to give value first uh, and then expect value later on right because when you give without expecting anything like for example hey this is my expertise right uh, this is my strength i can i'm i'm a tech student or i can i can do marketing right always give value first or uh, and then understand they will itself approach you for who you are is what i feel most people they just go and introduce pe- uh, themselves in events and everything but i think you need to be very smart in asking the right questions and build a rapport if you ask them in the first meet no sachi it kind of turns them off hey i'm looking for an internship because everyone is doing the same i think what is more important is you should probably um, you know build some time in understanding them spending effort and uh, time in understanding their journey so that even they feel valued especially i'm talking about these industry leaders so i think networking like that by giving value first is very important and i think it's the most organic way also to build your relationships um and the and the last thing is right like um you know just be very um planful about whatever you're doing because the 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 few years you come here are obviously very important um so it's about how you build relationships with people not only back home in india also about here and you have to plan your next 6 months your next one year your next two years and understand where you're heading uh, i did this mistake i was very broad minded when i came here uh, but as i came here i had to understand that hey these are the things i'm targeting right it's only a b c it mm-hmm. can't be a b c d e f g h it Every can't be that because you're going nowhere to a day right right it has to be one two three things that's it you know keep it concise hmm. but be effective with that so i think these three things is what i would like to say like so when you say concise you mean like your focus areas right like what yes. you not like you were yeah. everything can't yeah. do absolutely job. right 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 okay yeah because but, i've done that mistake i sometimes i take too much on my plate and i'm not able to give 100% to everything mm-hmm. so it should take one or two things and give 200% to each thing right. is you know what i learned in a very hard way okay <laughs> okay <laughs> nice. all of this information has been like gold thank you so much rehan and uh, really wish you all the best 
I'm sure you'll do well. You thank have you, the right mindset, yeah. you have the right attitude and uh, thanks a lot for reaching out. Mm-hmm. It was really nice to connect with you, get to know you. So, no, no, hopefully such. And I think even you're doing amazing, right? Like uh, I remember that day we were talking and how content is going on your mind 24 into 7, yeah. the ability to, the, you know, help your students. Yeah. I think that is very important because uh, and you're doing it very organically, right? Many people have um, a reason two or three to do it. But yeah. I think your first motive is to actually help the student go through yeah, and true. be there for them. So I think that is very important. And that's why I even I connect with you, right? Like, I think the what you're giving out to the community is very uh, valuable. So keep oh. going, man. I think I think you're doing great. Yeah, thank you so much. So this was Rehan's story. I hope you found it interesting and useful. If you want to talk to him directly, do check out his LinkedIn profile. It's right below in the description box. Especially if you're going to Yukon, I highly recommend that you have a chat with him before you step into the US. And for more information on US visa process, do follow our playlist. We regularly update videos, help you navigating the US visa process. In fact, you can also work with me one-to-one on your application. We can help you in filling the DS-160 form, preparing for the interview, and taking mocks. The link for all this is right below in the description box, along with some free resources as well for you to prepare. We also have a lot of useful videos on US universities, so do check out this playlist as well. Signing off for now, I'll see you real soon. If you have any more questions, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below or you can also DM me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is at shachi.mal.